Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. It's so nice of you to join. Um, all right, so the next lecture is going to be Professor Tuola Lucia, from Marco Lega. And I'm actually giving the word because it's good. It's good to pronounce it. I'll give you the word. <laughs> so naturally, the, the title of the region uh, is uh, the Tokyo Babylon, <laughs> the, the Babylon is double naming. Uh, for me, I have been, because I have grown up with rock music and techno and reggae, for me, you know, Babylon means Babylon system and the spectacle and cultural society. But at the same time, New Babylon, uh, is a legendary work by the uh, constant uh, the Dutch version the author. And uh, the ones I met him, uh, the, the, you know, that we have the interview about uh, the situation is not so long. Actually, uh, since more than uh, 15 years, uh, I have always spent uh, summer time and spring time in Amsterdam. Uh, in the beginning, and the purpose was uh, the research and field work on the free radio, the, the pirate radio, and the squad movement. Because I was also involved with the pirate free radio in Tokyo in those days, uh, more than 25 years ago. Even Elich and Felix Vittori also visited us uh, when I was uh, still a student. So the <clears throat> today, yeah, the, when I watch the project and the agenda of the world tour of the, uh, your project, it's great. But at the same time, I was a bit afraid, you know, so many guests from the abroad, especially from Amsterdam, so easily people can be seduced and attracted by this model. <laughs> so actually, uh, for me, I myself, I have to say, uh, I also the caught in the trap of the stereotype for European society, especially Amsterdam and uh, some other city. Also Montreal in the winter semester, I'm teaching at the McGill University in Montreal. So then I realized my own paranoia of the port city or island city or archipelago type of the cities. So that is my paranoia, more cosmopolitan. Fans movement, squad movement, free media. So easily I can be trapped in the stereotype or romanticization of the Sun City, you know, utopic idea, you know, ex punk uh, a little bit leftist mind, and uh, okay, pretty bourgeois anarchist, <laughs> something like this. So I'm afraid, uh, I'm pretty aware of that, my trick. But at the same time, I'm afraid, you know, the people come to people who come to Japan, they easily trapped in uh, some kind of the stereotype. I, I, I don't want to say I, I'm not saying you know, you are trapped or your project, uh, but it can happen. So, in order to avoid this type of the trap in both sides, for you and for me, then uh, I prepared uh, this <laughs> presentation tonight. Okay. <laughs> I'm always wondering why Japanese people who are unknown to each other never try to talk to each other on the street, station, square, and public sphere. I'm always wondering. But already we have the other example today, right? In the previous presentation on the board. It can happen in, I mean, uh, uh, the conversation amongst unknown people and uh, amongst Japanese. It can happen in local city, touristic area, of course, and rural parts, certainly. But strangely, it is very rare to see the case like in Amsterdam or other European cities. At least for me, I have impression. These characteristics come from fatal absence of the notion of public sphere in this society. This is my hypothesis. There are so many square, public places, public buildings, and so on. But 
There is no public sphere in Western sense or European sense or if you want to have a Marxian sense. Uh, my background is in philosophy and critical theory and so on. So from time to time, I'm sorry I'm including a, a strange proper name, but don't worry. <laughs> So I can say it's also connected to the over security control paranoia in the society. Of course, this is notorious in the United States. So the Japan and the United States nowadays, both states and both society for me seemingly comes into the middle stage each other in very bad way middle stage each other. So that, 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 that is also one of the other hypotheses. Okay, other example. <clears throat> Dancing. You know, I'm a music lover. Today after presentation, I wish to play music with no techno or some other kind of stuff. So that was my main purpose. This is supplement, actually. Uh, <laughs> Dancing is not yet banned in Tokyo nowadays. Because even the cultural and educational ministry has decided recently to include the program of the dancing in the course of the primary school. Okay, in primary school, the people can dance, or so hip hop, or techno, or rock, it will be happy. Yes, I agree. Strangely enough, according to the law and the regulation, dancing is only allowed in some restricted places where all night dancing cannot emerge, cannot occur actually. Or in strange it sounds. Because of the notorious law on the control and the improvement of amusement business in Japanese, who all, any space, any space tolerated, because dancing must retain a license, main room should have 66 kilometer at least, and must close till mi midnight or 1 a.m. This is so tough for techno shin and even for rock shin. It's, it's a very destructive idea. But this is a regulation, actually. Already. Why? In... Sorry, why? <laughs> why? Why is this a regulation? Good question. But today it is. In Osaka, the club machine had been completely swept away by the intervention police due to the non holding proper license, which is linked to the hidden agenda of the construction of casino in the case of the Osaka. And also in Tokyo, you know, stupid uh, that governor uh, recently he proclaimed uh, he resigned uh, that Tokyo governor and uh, he would try to enter again into the national politics. Uh, government, uh, not government, parliament, he tried to uh, be candidate, become candidate. So he's a type of psychology, populist, racist, sexist, uh, everything. But he also has an idea to construction or, or, or establishment of the casino, also other systems, which, which are also related to mafia business and some other part of the business. So the, yeah, mainly because of the capitalism and the neoliberal reformation or gentrification. But whoever itself, as such, uh, was established or was made in 1920s. Imagine, 1920s, before fascist regime, before Second World War, such a type of the stupid law. It's completely not up to the reality. But still, there are some regulations. Then, Police, government, authority, and the populace try to catch up some situation. Then they decided to use this old, old law and regulation. That's a main scheme. But I don't want to talk all the time on the dance machine or techno machine. You know, the, I'm not a, anymore activist in a sense. So I'm teaching in university, so I'm writing the books. So where is my mission? Seriously, you know, if I'm really, really thinking about this type of the politics, I can be activist, you know. I should resign the position of the university, the professor, and so on. Now I'm seriously thinking, what can I do, right? Then, for instance, digging the text, 
digging the ray of the text or the history of the ideas or the philosophy like a DJ. DJ can dig in the music, the ray of the music and the different genre of the music. So the, the same course for uh, the position or the mission of the intellectuals or teachers or the professors. Then I try to dig in some layer of the social thought in Japan and then uh, the, the, it's there some kind of the counterparts of the what is excluded from the city or armies, you know, what has been repressed in the history of their armies. So that is my uh, one of the objects. I think that that's a, it's related to the, also the absence of the notion of the public sphere, you know, for me. And this is also my point. In Japan, there is no public sphere. There are so many public places, but if really we want to have a public gathering or public sphere for communication, for negotiation, for new initiatives, we need a privatized space. This is a paradox of the Babylon and the Tokyo. So that's why uh, I'm going to, to talk about an uh, old essay by Ujita Shozo. It's written in 81, 1981, the beginnings of the gentrification for the global economy in Japan. In his essay, An Experience of the Loss, uh, the history of ideas of the game of the seek and hide. In Japanese, other sources no keiken, kakurenbo no seishishi, 1981. Fujita Shoso argued about the disappearance or withering away of kakurenbo, the game of hide and seek. You, all of you know the game of hide and seek. Probably in the West and in Japan there are many differences or small differences, but it doesn't matter, I think. Uh, hide and seek as game had been swept away from the street sheen of the cityscape throughout the period of the high economic growth in the post war Japan because of the rapid outgoing of the urbanization and brutal omnipresent eruption of automobility. Car culture had radically transformed the meaning of the passage, Roji, which represented an intimate outside as both an entrance to society and exit of the household that was defined as a private sphere or intimate sphere distinguished from the public sphere. But his speculation is neither to be reduced a mere player or lamenting that indulgence in the nostalgia for the past, nor criticism and accusation against the hasty gentrification. Uh, even Giorgio Agamben, uh, who is a pioneer authority of the biopolitics and the cultural society, Italian philosopher, he also mentioned in his book and the hide and game of the hide and seek, but I will do uh curate pass under the, the, this sentence for the time. Turn back to the Hujita's analysis on the game in, in its detail. The child charge of the role of the demon, Oni in Japanese, of the demon in the game has to embrace an essential solitude and deserted experience with a haphazard mutation and a condensed shock in the affection by playing it blissfully. So in this sense, this game is a kind of a simulation or mimicry of exiled experience from society and community in which series of principal social experiences to be articulated as if the fragmented effects of the desire were culminated in a kind of the abstract of painting or toy. Through so playing the game, children as players unconsciously come to formulate tiny placenta of experience in their desperate rear of their deepest ray of the mind. By this terminology, placenta of experience, which it meant platform entering the experience of the private living into that of the society. I mean, from the public sphere into the, the uh, no, from the intimate sphere or private sphere into the public sphere. He defined this game as a micro model of articulating our experience. So, the, for, for him, uh, this game 
offer the occasion for some counterparts of the initiation in the pre-modern society. But at the same time, it's not turning back to the pre-modern community or harmonious totality or foreigners. That's also provided the occasion uh, to enter in the working place or disciplinary formation in the school. So the, it has double ambiguous meaning in this game, I mean, hide and, hide and seek. So you can compare you know, the, this type of the game in each society, in, in, in each context, I guess. Gujita uh, also talked about uh, uh, small, for instance, the story of Tom Tom or the fairy tales, you know, uh, how for him there are something common in the fairy tale and the game of hide and seek. So it's a very improvisational, very interactive, and uh, participants should make narrative setting. And uh, participants should uh, compose their idea before playing. They should invent the rule or regulation in within the improvisation, like a language game uh, in uh, Wittgenstein. <clears throat> For instance, who is the real author or inventor of the fairy tale or the hide and seek game? Fujita can reply, it is ascribed to anonymous procession embedded within the history as such. This agency could neither be fixed nor located within the linear agenda and the localized site, but being disseminating itself in the gulf of the time, like uh, angels walking in the air, you know, some anonymous subject uh, is emerged and working in the society uh, with the, their fragile vestige. But this anonymous subject can be defined as a collective ensemble or collective assemblage of the talking and speaking and communication and enunciation. I mean, its basis, which is basis of the public sphere. Both fairy tale and the game have articulated the pattern. Uh, sorry, articulated the pattern that has been crystallized in the repetition the routine activity for both a shame and characteristic of the ritual and the festival. And the festive moment which was also visible within the walls of the fairy tale of the game, festival moment has shown their most stark nature at the moment of initiation in the case of the pre-modern society. But the initiation by definition is a specific periodical moment that Fluctuate the symbolic cross of the death and renovates the social order synchronized with the rhythm of the natural environment. As many theories departed from the field work in ethnography and anthropology have clarified and acknowledged this point. Initiation is also the symbolic process of the entering society and at the same time the moment of split away from the common world of the public sphere. Both game of the hide and seek and the fairy tale undertake the analogous function with the varied shape of the ritual of the initiation as occasion of the social rivers and the transition into the secret spiritual world. Okay, this is uh, the argument by the Ujita. So the, on the one hand, seemingly he is lamenting, drawing, you know, this appearance of uh, the game or pre-modern factor of the society. But his argument cannot be reduced to the, 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 this type of the argument. So now I'm going to talk about uh, the next point. The role of the demo, Oni, in the game of the hide and seek, encapsulates an experience of the social withdrawal, Komori in Japanese, which is equated with, equated with comparable and comparable to self-isolation or self-containment. 
among the youth generation in the contemporary world? Have you heard about the hikikomori, right? Uh, with the drama. This is now there everywhere. Finland, <laughs> Holland, <laughs> New York City, everywhere. It, uh, even in English, hikikomori is available. So the, we can also, through the, some ethnographic knowledge or anthropological knowledge, uh, we can uh, think about the hikikomori in terms of their initiation or social isolation or withdrawal in the mythical, mythical narrative level. So the, I don't want to reduce everything into the dustbin or the primo demo. But, you know, still for contemporary Sari illustration, we can use or appropriate some notion from anthropology or folklore or ethnography as to it. That's my point. Then, the game of hide and seek in the, this perspective can be seen as a modern version of initiation. But in the process of the over-modernization and the hyper-gentrification, it is threatened to be lost and forgotten. You know, game is just game. Game lost the meaning, mythical or narrative meaning, or the summer moment for the initiation, day by day, rapid to gentrification, or rapid to motorization. The, this type of the aspect can be, could be swept away. That was uh, Fujita's heavy criticism against uh, gentrification already at the beginning of the bubble economy or uh, speculative economy or the gentrification in Japan in the very early 80s he raised uh, this issue. Uh, this is very interesting for me. What's interviewing for us on the game Katunembo in another respect is during the game, the children who were sold and fined by Chaser, Demon, Oni, they also would attempt to withdraw themselves in the small corner of the street of the tiny room as a cave by their intention of hiding and escaping from the Chaser, Oni. Symbolic death and the reverse by attempt temporary isolation are lived through the both role of the prayers and the demon. Although a form of the polarity is uh, pretty visible, so uh, that I already explained. <clears throat> the behavior of the hiding in the game present a bit modified the case of the social withdrawal that form ritual and practice. What is at stake for the Fujitor's argument here is that the child charged of the role of the demon can we obtain membership among the children. In turn, you know, the Oni can be uh, going back to the membership or the, or the colleagues. But the Oni was excluded from the colleague. You know, the turn in turn, they can exchange the law. Fujita, in this game, looking through the, some kind of the jam or the nut roots, but uh, some, uh, some nuclei of the democracy, you know, the, with the competition, with agonistic situation, and at the same time some interactive communication. And then, uh, time by time, uh, they can exchange law and play the agency. So the, the, that's why the, he insisted uh, the, 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 the germ of the democracy. In this matter, the uneven discrepancy of the polarity between the winner and the loser is to be relativized and annihilated in this game so that an integration within mutual salvation or lessening through the mediation of antagonism take place. In this manner, the game of the high and seek provides with utopic, demo democratic at least, utopic fragment of another or alternative, not alternative, alternative formation of the society by which 
the public sphere in the conventional sense is to be dismantled and undermined. The game of the hide and seek is not merely mimicry and simulation of society, but also the positing and the virtual transgression against the reign of conformity of the institutionalized in society. Okay, I have to tweet and skip on some parts. Uh, within the game, uh, we can find out the, uh, the characteristic of the repetition. Uh, the nature of the repetition in the valid activity in the contemporary society provides an occasion of the lesson to accustom for the condition of the contemporary working form, especially in the so-called post this mode of the labor formation which has its crucial basis in the distraction and the playful activity in its multi-intended cognitive affective process. So through playing the game, hide and seek, uh, through the, some the behavior or activity of the repetition, uh, children can learn by learn uh, some behavior. Of course, uh, through sports, in the disciplinary formation of the school and the modern society, military system, military black, and the school disciplinizing uh, provided the case. But uh, hide and seek, uh, it comes from the ethnographic or folklore or, or, or more pre modern background, but nevertheless, still, in, even in the post for this formation, even in the gentrification, even in the postmodern formation of the salary and the economy, uh, this game can provide it some arena for the, uh, uh, some uh, model uh, in order to be accustomed to a more self-reflexive, recursive uh, subjectivity. To, to get such type of subjectivity, uh, this game can be used, or in fact, in the history, uh, it can function. So that is a little bit, I'm adding my own analysis uh, to, to Fujita's uh, the, the paper. Distraction indicates the aspect of the entertainment and the brain becoming a popular mass society in which the body in the fairground of the diversion of ignores the alienation of everyday life and distracts the people from uh, this type of alienation. Distraction also shapes specific type of the concentration in diverse vector. It's strange. Concentration in diverse vector of the affection and the recognition within the emergent industrial society. Especially the, in the post police formation, people call it cognitive labor fruit or community alert. So, the, of course, there is a strong gap between the police formation and the post police formation. But uh, there are also the continue uh, something uh, still labeling. Uh, what is excluded, or what has been repressed, what has been swept away from the urbanism or urban development is suggesting some traces or the vestige and the traces of the gap and the passages and the differences between the polis and the post polis formation, or pre modern uh, to modern. Uh, West to Asia, oh, this is tricky. But uh, at least this type of the, you know, strategic or tactical, without such type of the tactical detour, we just uh, fight against uh, Ishihara or police or the nuclear new nuclear industry. Of course, this is really, really important to organize a demonstration or a rally or to organize the, the gathering against such type of the stupid project by nation, nation state or, or the capital especially. But in the beginning of the, my presentation, I said, you know, 
we all cannot be, we, we all cannot become all militant activists, right? People who are engaged in the business or the, some entrepreneurial the initiatives. Uh, sometimes the leftists are so hasty, you know. New Age, no. Oh, NPO, no. Uh, because uh, they are just ignoring the neglect and the class issue and the class conflict. Okay, that's true. For instance, the Zizek have this. You know, all the time English speaking world in only in the name here is uh, speaking uh, in the Stalinist way or Leninist way, Leninist way. But uh, I'm pretty, I think this type of their, their, their behavior is pretty less possible. So, uh, how we can get the place or space for negotiation or interactive communication? Of course, public sphere in, the, in, in our history, especially in the, in the West, public sphere provided such occasion. But the point is, in Japan, there is no public sphere. But there are desire to be public or to be uh, to, 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 to be within the togetherness. It's obvious to some discussion in the previous panel and presentation. Uh, the story of the boat. So that's why I needed to <laughs> make an intervention. So it's really, really related to, to also to my presentation. So maybe the, we can uh, go into uh, to, to, uh, the discussion. Thank you very much for all this time. <laughs> Second question, yeah, my girlfriend spent one and a half year in Montreal and then she came back with this entry and then now she's a heavy, heavy crisis uh, because uh, in Amsterdam, she also was very familiar to, to, with Amsterdam and then, you know, they're on the street or in the tram, eye contact or smiling, only in the party machine or well, every party in open there we can have such type of communication hugging each other or unknown uh, others or the, the people can communicate frankly but on the street here you know don't smoke hey, stupid regulation <laughs> but uh, even as expunk I don't want to make trouble anymore <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, in that way so there are so many initiating you know the point in this control society, but that does which does not mean the absence of the public sphere. But that is your question. But uh, for me, yeah. Also, like I said in rural parts, local city or islands, there are some public sphere. I realize. So the maybe in some parts of the pre-modern parts, or, or folkloristic parts, or ethnographic parts of Japan, there are some uh, seeds or fragments of the public sphere in Western sense, but in the uh, center, or the capitalistic uh, Babylon, Babylon system <laughs> doesn't have <laughs> public sphere. That's, and so the Japan and the United States are most notorious uh, to kind of the Babylon system, I have to say. <laughs> the first question, yes, 
somehow willingly and uh, floating in the different time and space. So that is a somehow methodological reason. Because uh, even in the field of the architecture, or the urban theory, or especially in uh, social philosophy and critical theory, already in the 70s, there were such type of the arguments to turn it back to the people. Not feudal type, but more utopic, more the mutual help, based on the mutual help, and more solidarity. Still, such type of the discourse are very prevailing in the leftist circle or even academia. So that is one direction, going to not regression, but retroactively turning back to, to some point. But I would like to include the mythical, sometimes mystical, <laughs> and the tribal cultural moment. Also, I would like to include. Then some people criticize, hey, this is new age, spiritualism, and so on. So, willingly, tactically, I try to provide some different angle and perspective. In fact, even post for this formation and post modern formation also still contain those previous moments, previous moments, and different moments. There is no linear agenda or linear procedure, pre-modern, modern, or post-modern. So there are always, in fact, real history or actuality is messing up on the mixing of the different moments. So that's why the, even uh, reading this paper essay by Fujita, I tried to somehow willingly to make it messing up or uh, somehow methodological the mixing of the different moment or the time gap. Yeah, thank you very much, next question. So I think the example of the spoken is really good because in a way I think about it in the opposite way. Mm -hmm. I think that that force people together rather than smoking individually. So actually, it creates an opportunity to make a conversation, but people choose not to chat, which I find it interesting. So they're going to be sit, uh, standing up next to each other for five minutes, and people look away, rather than using the opportunity to make create something together. That's something that I thought I had a different. I wanted to know what you think about. Yeah, yeah that's is a, exactly. The the example, uh, they're a little bit paradoxical, right? Yeah. So, because of the, under the strong control of the wild power, we can get some fragment of the small seed of the communication of our sphere. Uh, this is really, I like this type of the paradox, uh, the, the which comes from the system and such, right? Uh, it can be called artificial negativity. The system tries to make up the totality and the control or the perfection, but it's already, all, always already fed, right? Oh, yeah. So the, that type of the paradox is only the possibility or potential for our emancipation. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't get the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really surprising for occupation. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, and I have a second question. Yeah. But in the 70s, uh, university campuses were open spaces where debate was actually happening. So after repression, now university became very like, commodified. So I was wondering, like, how do you think the idea of public space, when actually it's a very Western concept also, like the idea of private and public, do you think that can be applied to Japan in the same way? Much worse. <laughs> but that's why I, so from time to time, try to have the party in campus. And uh, I'm playing the equipment, drinking alcohol with the student. But so many universities in Tokyo already decided to ban drinking alcohol in campus. Okay, the drunk is another story. But just drinking beer, what a problem. But already a couple of the students died because of too much stupid drinking. But the point is, parents! And the school, high school, and 
university professors, they are so afraid of the next something to happen in their field. And then uh, over, you know, secure, over security and over, how can I say, it's uh, too much, you know, not excess, you know, this is just a too much reaction or the instance. So that's why I said much worse. But uh, at least in the campus, there's a still possibility. We can organize a workshop or a party. And from time to time, uh, I brought some uh, material I cooked, and then I, I offered the students for the discussion. But some colleagues or the, some more uh, crazy or more often professors give something that happened. Uh, uh, how you can uh, respond to the responsibility from the incident? So, uh, yeah, all in this society in Tokyo, such type of the security panel here as a good idea. So, the, even in Asakusa or in a boat, you can, uh, if you can read the Japanese language, or there's some, you can check some regulation from the boat, and uh, yeah, you will see. <laughs> Yeah, um, I arrived uh, three days ago, so I'm sure I'm going to say something uh, very stereotypical. Sorry about that, but um, I visited two uh, shrines, and uh, I think they are more of a public space as we see it in the Western world. What I noticed is that as soon as people went under the gate, entered the gate, uh, it changed. There was more chattering, people were more uh, open minded. Uh, and today I visited the uh, Asakusa Temple, which is basically a, a huge uh, shopping center. Yeah. So you have a religious uh, monument combined with a, a shopping center. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I think that's a very interesting um, worry, religion, public space and, and shopping. Uh, so maybe you just do something else in the public space in the chattering, shopping or contemplating or do something with, with that combination. I just, what do you think oh, about this okay. very stereotypical if you, no, no, no. if you are interested in such a type of uh, mixture between uh, shopping mall and uh, religious, sacred, or the shrine or the parts, uh, especially in the uh, South Islands, so many islands and the archipelago, the deep south, I mean, uh, somehow in between Kyushu and Okinawa, there are so many small islands. That in there, they don't have shopping mall, they don't have a convenience store, but somehow we could observe such type, exactly such type of the strange mixture between sacred religious parts and the daily shopping area. But in the case of Dasakusa, it's a of course, you know, it's very touristic, and the history, is, uh, history of the, 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 the temple is also the Nasomo, and the Yasukuni Shrine, also very, very new, for instance. So Ise or uh, Meiji is very old, and uh, also the forest is uh, even, uh, even uh, us, it's uh, something very impressive. So uh, you can just uh, learn or accustom or some parts in Tokyo, and of which one is more historical, which one is just faster, or which one is just uh, appropriated for the purpose of the capitalistic <laughs> or the bubble system, then uh, I just suggesting you know the next time you can visit more rural parts, especially the islands. Because Ireland it has its own, their own microcosmos, microcosm, microcosmos. But here, you know, the, just the center and the periphery. But where is the periphery? Where is the marginal part of the Tokyo? This is very invisible, right? But sometimes in the temple or shrine, you can see some uh, uh, capsulation or making circle or drawing the line between the marginal and the center. Then this type of the dichotomy can be uh, shifted into the dichotomy or, or, or the binary opposition 
uh, of the economical sense in the center of the periphery, the, the, the same is a form for economical formation, right? So the, even for global economy, we can also be included in such type of the mythical, uh, mystical, <laughs> or tribal parts of their culture. The Japan is a good model, in fact, in that sense. And it's, it's nothing to do with stereotype, I think. I mean, uh, strange mixture between hyper-modern, hyper-technology, <coughs> and mystic, mythical, religious part. So, uh, in the United States, uh, we couldn't see such a type of strange mixture. Is it, is it difficult to mix this mythical uh, culture with uh, the, the culture that is uh, right here, right now, uh, when uh, the culture has, has to uh, evolve and uh, rebuild itself because of the geological uh, situation? Is that a big theme in, in, in founding the theory of uh, your, your uh, In many ways, <clears throat> most of their initiatives or attempts to appropriate or to use the mythical religious part in the politics or social formation, that attempt has been done by right wing. <laughs> Very, you know, the stereotypical or even brutal way. And the leftists, they don't like such type of idea. But I think <laughs> we can also seriously think about it because it, Shinto has nothing to do with emperor system. But emperor system, after the age period, they appropriated, they ab abused, in fact. The Shintoism is just a tribal culture, or like a cult in Europe, I think. Primitive or tribal parts of the culture. So it's worth trying, but unfortunately in the past hundred years, <laughs> it's had a Right. <laughs> and not tricky also. For me, the, it's a kind of a risk to much uh, emphasizing uh, is religious or mythical, blah, blah. So that's why I would raise other examples, Celtic, or how the tech machine, the people are interested in uh, tribal, uh, native American culture, or the you know, European Celtic culture, or the... <laughs> that's why the tactical of the two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay uh, two questions, one very short. Uh, I'll ask it first. Uh, you use the term Babylon. I'm curious what do you exactly mean by that when you use it? And secondly, um, so when you pose that such a thing, this kind of Western notion of a public sphere doesn't insist, uh, exist. What is then, uh, because the public sphere in the West has like uh, okay, uh, several functions, you can meet the other, there can be kind of friction conflict, but it's also where public discourse happens, ideas are tested or and are adopted and become a movement or become really? meaningful. Uh, but, but what, because of course these functions are also here, but maybe they don't operate on this notion of the public sphere, but still, as a person has an idea, it needs supporters, you need to mobilize an idea and to do it. so you can make changes in society. So in the West, this is what the public sphere is for, but what is then the, the notion or the platform uh, within uh, Japanese society for this? Mm -hmm. Concerning the bubble, just a list of both my and uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. You know, seriously. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You know, conceptually, we can read how you know Rasmanian uh, they integrated the, the, uh, the Bible into the different culture. Uh, it's a great, great uh, appropriation or interpretation, practical interpretation. That's why just read Rasmanian uh, <laughs> poet. Then the second question, 
In fact, uh, amongst uh, my colleagues in university and uh, also the conversation with the students, I'm wondering how, why Japanese people, my colleagues and friends and their relatives and so on, why they are so much like to be controlled, to be secured. They don't want to think independently, you know. Uh, based on the stereotype, cultural essentialism, uh, on the battlefield, because of the using the water, people should follow the, the neighbor, neighbors. But I think this is really, really stupid stereotype. But that's true, you know. The people does not want to think independently. Then always like to follow. So the people. don't want to be visible or obvious or somehow uh, wish to be anonymous in different sense. <clears throat> That's one of the big obstacles for just a society, not only having the Western type of the public sphere. Uh, but who's controlling who then? And, uh, hmm? Well, if you say they like the, to follow, to not kind of take this uh, responsibility of showing themselves, standing up for an opinion or anything like that. But where somebody at the other end is giving the security and giving, handing them the control or, uh, or controlling them. So still there's a system in place and it operates on a certain uh, operating system. Yeah, maybe say. Babylon system is very functional very well. For instance, uh, nuclear pollution. I'm really, really afraid of daily my food in the delirious. I'm always asking on the cafe, what type of the milk you are using? I never enter in the Starbucks anymore. They, they are great because they are supporting Fukushima. They bought so many cheap Fukushima milk. They mixed <laughs> the different milk. Okay. <laughs> okay, soya is okay, maybe, not milk. But soya also from Fukushima. So, no one knows inside pollution, contamination. I'm still afraid. Okay, the rest of the time, the rest of 20 years, or 30 years, doesn't matter. I'm still afraid. So, something like that. So, the people don't want to say that kind of things because it can be visible, right? So, very afraid, excluded, and repressed. So, the independency is a stigma in the society. And the traumatized. Hmm. That, 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 that this comes from school system. <laughs> why do really you press up on why isn't these all these kind of subcultures? Like, they're <laughs> the same, of course, but they, they do stand out. You see them everywhere. And they That's stand also, out. I'm wondering, we are always wondering why they are not wearing the long down to the clothes and all the time following the new yeah. stuff. Fujita Shozo also had an essay on the new commodity culture. It's always glittering, mm -hmm. uh, shining, so that he criticized it also. So the many <laughs> critical mind noticed the, the, that point. So the how it can be combined with uh, no independency and uh, no visible. <laughs> but, uh, so I <laughs> yeah, they use the they use the public space. Can I give you one final question? They use the public space, but they also, I think, don't have a public sphere when they come together. That, 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 that is just as advertise, advertisement, like in the United States. It's a public sphere, you know, the, yeah. like a simulation or completely. Sorry, the, the, this type of the saying also the stereotypical lefty. Yeah, I, 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 So, okay, coming from the Jamaican in the room, I want to ask <laughs> my fellow Jamaican, honorary Jamaican, <laughs> okay. at what point did your eyes open? At what point did you realize, huh? And were you hammered down for it? And how did you deal with it? In my case, music, and the gathering of the party, I'm all, not a professional DJ, but uh, supporting the young. Fifteen years ago, 
Any other? No. I came of course. Okay, of course, I'm wrong all the time grown up with rock and reggae and so on. I somehow hate techno uh, the house music. Ah, this is a completely conscious theory, but the system, I thought. But in open air party in Dusseldorf, 300 people, and then uh, you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so at what point did you feel the system here and you decided you have to go against it? Because so many don't. And I question it constantly. Like, when will people open their eyes and wake up? Well, how, how did you wake up? How did you reach that point? My tribes are maybe less than 1,000 in the whole Japan, yeah. maybe a few hundreds in Tokyo. Then, because of the pollution, many friends and the tribes already abandoned Tokyo, going to Kyushu. Then uh, they started to make some village or commune. Uh, but not Red Bank. They are still to come to Tokyo to play. And also the business for the graphic design and computer design. Of course, you can imagine that by DJing, no one can earn money or can survive. They have a job. But post the formation, they can work everywhere in Japan, even in the deep South Island. So the, in that sense, we try to yeah, uh, what's, the point? What, what's the point to, to, to eyes open? Yes, such type of the daily continuation of the having a party, but not only party, so organizing the, uh, the workshop, sometimes talk, and uh, editing the zine, and so on. But unfortunately, Japanese people are so much accustomed to the English writing and speaking, so <coughs> only exclusively available. So, but uh, continuing, I can say, I came across uh, years, uh, many years ago, but still uh, this narrative is going on, not only in Japan, everywhere else. But here, Babylon system is so strong. So. Yeah. Cool. Um, do you have one question? Oh, um, no, cool. sorry, I came in late, so I didn't get the beginning of your talk. But, um, I'm interested in uh, addressing some of the themes that you're uh, you're talking about through the uh, the lens of fear, and the question is, what has been the genealogy or the history of fear as you see it in in, in Japanese society? What is what is Japanese society fearful of? I mean, some of the the, the the uh, anecdotes you tell, you talk about the fear of, in this case, the post uh, Fukushima situation, fear of ecological dis destruction or catastrophe, where those kinds of fears would seem to be related to a kind of survivalist uh, kind of attitude, right? Um, but then uh, you could also talk about fear of uh, losing some sense of uh, future, some sense of narrative, some sense of a, of a kind of um, a kind of role in 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 the world, a larger role in, in the global system in Japan. And uh, what's interesting to me is I don't detect much of sense of that kind of fear uh, in Japanese politics or in Japanese. But I find it odd because you get this kind of dynamic where one layer is extremely fearful, fearful about security, fearful about thinking independently, fearful about uh, ecological problems. But on another, at another level, uh, it's kind of a blasé attitude in which nothing really matters. Do you know the in Japanese language, Japanese song, uh, Reading the Air? Good to know. Leading the air or leading the atmosphere. For, for instance, in the crowd, a DJ can read four, you know, reading four. So in that sense, reading the air. And that means atmosphere or communicative situation amongst the uh, togetherness, among together people. So the, that is very buzzword, has been buzzword since 10 years. And youth and also adult person or business firm, Kukiyomi. So the, 
I'm kind of the, I cannot read air. You know, I can always <laughs> say what I'm thinking. <laughs> but isn't that uh, uh, not reading the air, but reading the ground? Because you can't depend on the Reading the air means, uh, you know, accustom to the major parts, dominant parts of the communication. Mm -hmm. We should be inclined to major dominant current. So that is reading air in Japan. So, the, I, but I think reading the air is a basis for the independence or autonomy in the, not only Western society, in the truly democratic society, I think. But here, unconscious potential latent totalitarian authoritative <laughs> desire is uh, always lingering. So the next government, obviously, you know, the more, more, and more reactionary or fascist type right wing uh, president, no president, the prime minister will come. And then also the governor of Tokyo, the he now the re entering the game in the national politics. <laughs> the war is not coming, actually. Uh, the China is not so stupid, but uh, I'm really afraid of the situation. So concerning the uh, your question, so the fear for the non unleading air, so that is a potential desire and fear of this society. That's why more than 3,000 people committing suicide, and then we already completed a custom. Hey, again, like rain. You know, I'm sorry about that, but in fact, many people, not only me, just saw the train, oh, again, shit, this is really, really insane. And then at the same time, if I would do directly the speaking about the pollution or contamination in the restaurant or on the street, people somehow try to be detached or other. Yeah, in the class or the course in the university, it's still possible, fortunately. But I'm afraid soon I can talk about the pollution of the food or the areas and so on. Because such type of pressure already happened in Fukushima. In, uh, in one family, you know, the mother wished to bring the children to the West, but uh, other parts of the relatives and the family which we, you know, embrace, try to embrace their, them. So that type of small coral, it's, it's just a small part of the story, but uh, everywhere in Japan, not only Fukushima issue. So the leading wear is a germ of the microfascism in Japan. But uh, I'm not only, <laughs> I, I'm not so much pessimistic, you know, because we have the music. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> On that note, um, maybe we can Wrap it up, and then um, let Professor Wim spin a little bit, and then just enjoy it, and kind of move the <laughs>